Elgonite. Quite some time I've haven't done a video, right? A, a sermon, a message, and tonight this message I'll say is potent. It's needful. It's needed at this present time, bedroom, because we know that the devil came down with great wrath knowing that he had but a short time and what God's people are supposed to be doing at this time is getting themselves ready the, 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 the problem is many of us we don't study we don't study to show thyself approved unto God a workman needed not to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth we don't study and because we don't study we will be taken up by the wiles of the devil but if we do thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee so with God's help feeding our minds in God's word we are gonna be able to withstand the wiles of the devil so the message that that I come to you I entitle it true Israelites or or true Jews who are they right so I put it in subheadings so let's get started who are they let's look at Romans 2 27 and 28 because many today they believe you know that the Jews and the Israelites we know that God chose a people and in ancient Israel these people came you know out of the Middle East right but who are they today right did God reject the former Israelites did he choose another people I mean we can find out that right so Romans 2 27 and 28 says it says and shall not circumcise let, let's start from um, 26 therefore if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision and shall not uncircumcision which is by nature if it fulfill the law judge thee who by the letter and circumcision thus transgress the law right verse 28 for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh right we know the covenant that God made with Abraham and the Israelites right to circumcise literally their, 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 their foreskin and, 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 and with that you know they had that covenant but really and truly who is a Jew or Israelite let me read it over for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh verse 29 but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God so as we establish that a Jew or Israelite or true Jews or Israelites are those that are from the heart are circ circumcised from the heart there's another scripture that we will stump we will um, share you know probably later on if I do come to that you know um, even in the Old Testament it confirms this so this is this is not no new gospel this is not okay there's a certain type of Jews in, in, 
in the Old Testament and then certain type of Jews in the New Testament. Brethren, it has been righteousness by faith all the way through. Justification by faith through Jesus Christ. So no man or none of the patriots and prophets who are saved, right, who sleep and wait that resurrection, could have said or, or, or they had they believed that okay i'm safe i'm saved by my works far from it brethren so let's go on our main chapter we will look at is romans chapter 11. right this is this is where the, the main foundation is for tonight and then we will do line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little so let's look at let's let's start from verse one and then i'll highlight the text that you know i want to make mention of and further information right so it says here romans 11 the king james version i saw then had god cast away his people god forbid this is paul speaking here for i also am an israelite this is what paul is saying of the seed of abraham of the tribe of benjamin God had not cast away his people, which he fore foreknew. Would he not, ye not, what the scripture said of Elias, how he make it intercession to God against Israel, saying, Verse 3, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. Right. So this is what Elias is saying. Verse 4. But what said the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Right? So God as a people in this dark world. Even though a lot are bowing to the image of the beast right now, it's being set up and the whole world is marching. Right? Read Daniel 3, you'll understand what's going on. But there are those God's elect, and I want to highlight that word for tonight God's elect who will not be deceived. So, verse 5, this is one I would like to highlight highlight for my study tonight verse 5 it says even so then of this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace all right so let's go on romans 11 5 let's go to romans 9 1 to 8 which is next door to it right romans 9 1 to 8 it says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also, bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in thy air, in thy heart, sorry, for I could wish that that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Right? So you see, Paul highlights Israelites, right? Who whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. Verse 6. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. I want us to understand that brethren. By the end of this message. We will understand who are they. The characteristics of them. And we will understand. That there is a prophetic church. A prophetic people that God raised up. In these last days, who are true Israelites, 
but then Paul is saying here, they are not all of Israel which are of Israel so by understanding the characteristics and the lifestyle that Christ want his people to follow we will understand we will see for ourselves by their fruits you shall know them so not all of them that are Israel is of Israel virgin so if it fall in your garden tonight or it fall in my garden virgin all we could do is humble ourselves before God because there's a lot to learn and a lot to unlearn there are many things we don't know so it says here neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children but in Isaac shall thy seed be called verse 8 that is they which are the children of the flesh these are not the children of God but the children of the promise are counted for the seed right so let's jot down to verse 27 now it says Isaiah, or you know, um, Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Right? A remnant shall be saved. Not all of them that are Israel is of Israel. And it says, though. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Brethren, and this is not no new theory, this is not no new, new, new thing, brethren. Only two adults entered Canaan land. Only two. Right? Um, I think it was 22,000. God called, um, used Gideon, 22 soldiers went with him, right, but God had to strip them off, and it is always boiled down to less than 1%, so out of the 22, only 300 remain, right, then what else, 8 entered the app, Noah's app, Right? Three came out of Saddam and Gomorrah. And we could go on and on. But let's continue. The election according to grace, right? So let's look at First Peter 1, 1 and 2. And this will put some meat on the bones, brethren. Let me tell you. We're looking at the elect. The elect. Remember Jesus said in Matthew 24 If it were possible If it were possible the very elect will be deceived So we first have to understand who are the elect And the characteristics and, and, and the lifestyle thereof And then we will understand that these, this group of people will not be deceived by God's grace So it says here First Peter 1 and 2 It says Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ To the strangers Scattered Throughout Pontus Gal Galatia Right And I can't pronounce that word Asia And And, 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 and I can't pronounce that other one either Right But verse 2 is crucial it says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Elect. So Peter was one of the elect. Right? But it, 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 it shows you um, the characteristics of the elect. He says, he is elect according to the foreknowledge of God. The Father. True sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied so brethren he has been one of God's elect 
right? Through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. So, brethren, we are sanctified by obeying God's will. We are sanctified through Jesus Christ. As the Bible says in first in, in, in John 1, the 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus is the word. He is the way, he's the truth, he's the life. He's everything. Right? So we are sanctified, the elect are being sanctified by obeying God's word. The truth that is in Jesus Christ. Right? There's a certain there, 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 there's a a message for this time in which the remnant people of God elect are being sanctified. You see, all this gospel that is floating around, or so called gospel, these GMOs, the thing is, is this the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are these the gospel of Jesus Christ? Virginia, you search suit for yourself. Right? It says Psalms 15. Let's look at it quickly. There. Psalms 15, a very short psalm. It says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness, righteousness is right doing, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbited not with his tongue, not do it evil to his neighbor, nor take it up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he honored them that fear the Lord, that reverence God and his, and his word. He that swear to his own hurt and change it not. He that put it not out his money to usury, right? Nor take it reward against the innocent. He that do it these things shall never be moved. That money for usury and stuff, I guess gambling and all of that could fall under there. Right? So we know the 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 the, 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 the remnant people of God will follow this part of Psalms 15. Right? So let's go on, brethren. The other heading we would look, like to look at is the experience of the elect. And this is crucial. Let's look at Revelation chapter 7. Brethren, these studies take a lot of time. But only in God's time, you know? So when I share these things, you know, most times I just be anxious to share, but, you know, days and, uh, and weeks this pass and, you know, it's like God is just want to add to the information and fine tune everything, you know, so I'm learning patience as, as the day is going, I'm learning to wait upon the Lord, and I know at the end of the day, you know, everything will be done in decency and in order. So Revelation 7. Let's, let's read that. It says, And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. If you don't know, winds are strife and war. 
right in book of jeremiah mentions that right we, we wouldn't go into that further but strife and war and bloodshed so holding back the four winds of the earth it just means four angels holding back the four winds it just means the cardinal points right east west north south it's not that there is um not that i shouldn't say there is lit there isn't literal angels there's angels you know assigned for this reason it's just that they are they are in all parts of the earth so they are holding back winds of strife they are holding back destruction for this world is ripe for destruction you know? but they're holding it back so even though you're seeing these little not these little but so many crime and, and, and bloodshed and all these things the winds are being loosed gradually you know but there's still a, a, a strong hold because brethren when they loose there will be a world war three a time of trouble daniel 12 1 says such as never was since there was a nation so that tells you that world war one two all these uh, catastrophic events says nothing compared to what coming and it should awaken us brethren you know why because if at that time we are left without a shelter, woe unto us, you know, woe unto us. So that's why I'm sharing this message, so that we will get ready before it's too late. So it says here, hold them out the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So it says, and I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads and I heard the number of them which were sealed and there was sealed a hundred and forty four thousand right of all the tribes of the children of Israel right so John is saying in, in, in chapter 7 here verse 4 that he, he heard he said and I heard the number right read Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 he says I saw the number so no argument about literal or not literal God has elect God is going to have a remnant people of God and as I said less than 1% always go through so yes brethren is literal and is a literal preparation we had to get ready right I want to be one of those and even if I don't and even if my faith is martyrdom or I die before the crisis Brethren, I pray to God only by his grace that I die saved by faith I believe that brethren so let's go on so we see here in Revelation 7 it talks about a sealing time so it says here hold back the four winds until the servants of God are sealed in their forehead right but verse 2 says and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Angel ascending from the east, brethren. So that just mention or make mention symbolically, it means we know just like the sun. The sun rises in east and it sets in the west. Right? So this just tell you. If you look at um, Proverbs 4.18, it says, But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So it tells you there that the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That's the sun, the rising of the sun at a certain point in the day. Full heat. Right? So there is truth is progressive. 
So these elect will be growing daily, feeding upon God's word, right? And it says in Psalms 119.105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, right? So they're following God's guidance through his word. They are growing daily, brethren. They are growing daily, right? So in other words, the work that the angel in the east is doing or preparing the elect or the 144 is what they call the sealing there is a sealing taking taking place and just as in the natural so in the spiritual you know so i give you the spiritual application the the, the, the natural is that when you look at a seal or, 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 or what takes place in the process of sealing we know if we take a sealer let's say we take a pack and let's say we fill the pack with let's say nuts and we know that the pack is an open pack right and there is nuts in it so we place the pack under the sealer and we press it down we hold it for a few seconds and the pack is sealed so it's ready for shipping it's ready it, it has already been prepared and it's ready for advertisement it's ready for sale right so what happens here is that there's a process of sealing so you fill it thy word have i hid in my heart that i might not sin against thee thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path but a part of the justice is a shining light so the word you know we 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 studying every day brethren it's being planted in us it's it, it's growing right and then you place it under the seal and then you're sealed right so the angel is saying hold it back because there's a sealing process going on so until these servants of God are sealed in their forehead. Right? And if you want more information about the sealing, about what is God's sign, seal, and his mark, there's a video. Please look at it. Um, I did it probably a couple weeks back. The name of it, I think, is God's sign, seal, and mark. Please be sure to look at that right and we'll it will even clarify who or, or who are the group of people that will be that will be sealed right so the 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 the, the pack is there and, and and the machine seals it but check something there's a counterfeit sealing right because sometimes when you when you double check after the pack is sealed sometimes it is our holes sometimes it don't seal properly so bedroom with the counterfeit sealing it will not be sealed properly it will not be wrapped tight so there's spurious messages there's gmo messages or gospels that we are hearing today and bedroom them kind of message could cannot sanctify the soul there is present truth for this time for second peter 1 12 says therefore i will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of the truth though you know these things and you be established in the present truth right there has been always been a present truth message all the way through history all the way through right so there's a message a right message for this time that will purify and sanctify the soul and seal God's servants in their foreheads. Right? So, Bajan, let's go to Genesis 32. I know you all are familiar with the, the Jacob's wrestling. Right? But let's 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 look at the few verses quickly. So that you will get an understanding of what I'm saying. Alright. Let's 
says here. Right, this is after. This is right before um, he was about. He was on his way back home, right? And he wanted to bounce up his brother Esau. But he was fearful. Because he heard hey, from his messengers that this man coming with hundreds of, of soldiers. So he trembled. Remember he, he, he obtained he obtained the birthright by fraud. By fraud, right? So Esau wanted to kill him. Right? He didn't have faith to believe that God will uh, perform his word in time. So his mom and him conspired and you know they, they obtained it by fraud. You know, so he was fearful, you know why? Because he had that burden on his shoulder. That sin, brethren. That sin so that so easily beset us. That stumbling block. And when there is sin in our lives, brethren, we are fearful. You understand? We are fearful, you know why? Because we are open to the walls of the enemy. You know, we are not, you know, in a frame of mind to be alert and to be vigilant and to be watchful. Right? So, you know, for your own research, look at Hebrews 12.1. You'll understand what I'm trying to say. So it says here, And when he took them, right, his family, and sent them over the brook, and sent, sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. This is Genesis 32 from verse 24. And it says, Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint as he wrestled with him so we see it's a, it's a physical wrestling here right right and this I'll just highlight this just highlights the experience of God's people Jacob's wrestling so it says here and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his tie and the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint as he wrestled with him verse 26 and he said and he said let me go for the day breaking and he said I will not let thee go except thou bless me right so you see there Jacob he, he, he out a joint he foot out a joint but he laying go you know he laying go because he realized the person who he wrestling with right this person, he realized he was wrestling with his, his creator and redeemer. It says, and he said unto him, verse 27, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Verse 28, and he said, thy name shall be called no longer Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and he said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it, is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face. So you realize who it was. Right? And my life is preserved. Right? No man can see God's face. God himself. God's presence is a consuming fire. So we know it's Jesus. He wrestled with him. Right? Now, brethren, we're looking at the experience. You understand? We, we stated at the beginning, a true Israelite is one inwardly. One from the heart. And circumcision is that which is from the heart, from inward. But... You don't get it just like that, brethren. There's a striving. This is why I make mention of this. There is a striving, brethren. There's a agonizing. There's a literal pleading for victory over sin. 
I know many of you have come to terms with that, that word or that term, victory over sin. But, but brethren, all, all through the scriptures, it gives us the recipe to get victory over sin. And that recipe is faith in Jesus, brethren. Believing. Right, and if God permits that I do a study on victory over sin, I will share from the God's word deeply, brethren, what it's saying about us gaining victory over sin. Even Matthew, which is one text alone, Matthew 5 48, be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father in heaven is perfect. What Jesus mean by that? Right? And there's a lot more. So, the pillars of Seminary Adventism. Right? Some of which victory over sin, righteousness by faith. Right? Justification by faith. These things, if God permit, you know, because I myself had to come to terms with these things. And I'll be able to share probably sometime later on. Right? But is a is a is a literal pleading and organizing bedroom. You and I can't get rid first of all we can't get rid of our besetting sins and, 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 and the sins that so easily beset us on our own. We need God's help, brethren. We need God's help. For it is God right that work it in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure right so we see there is a wrestling to take place and then the name changed to Israel you understand so brethren we are to get right you know we are to get right brethren and I'm striving daily only by God's grace and I'd like you to do the same too so it says here um even after um, this wrestling, what took place in Genesis 35, right? It says here from verse 1, And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God, that I prayed unto thee, when thou fleest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, and and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods. This is after his um, wrestling. This is after his conversion. By the way, that's conversion that takes place. Right? And to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you. And be clean and change your garments. So right here, it's talking about Christ righteousness Revelation 3 right Revelation 3 18 says I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that no, thou mayest be clothed that white raiment is Christ righteousness so he tell them change their garments for their own righteousness their own naked, nakedness is polluted it's pollution right I'll get into all of that in that study. Victory over sin, righteousness by faith. But, you know, the implications of these things are deep, brethren. So it goes on to, to, to explain what is the strange watch, right? And this is just, this is not only limited to these things. Right? Before, when you read the Ten Commandments, right? First one, thou shalt not have no other gods before thee. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So we know. We know the the, the the um the second commandment graven images all those who worship idols and all these foolishness that don't hear don't speak don't don't, don't, don't feel no nothing but the first one says thou shalt not have no other gods before thee so it's in context with this here so he says here put away the strange gods so he explained explain for the verse three and let us arise and go up to better and I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob, listen, all the strange gods, which were in their hand, 
and on there is earrings, hand rings, right? Which were in there is, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. The strange gods, I repeat, which were in their hand, and on their earrings, all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. To get, to get even more cal cal clarification on this oak tree, to see where it comes up again and what this oak tree represents. Right? He buried it under oak tree. For homework as well, what I'd like you to do is search up 1 Kings chapter 13. And you'll see the oak tree is mentioned there. There was a prophet of God. What did name it? Leave, leave, you just say prophet. Right? There's an oak tree. I'll just give you a little hint. God said him. To give a message. A little while after, he was found on an oak tree. Why? You need to search up and find out. So right here we see they buried under an oak tree. All the idols. So I just gave you a hint for what was going on with this prophet. And you will see the faith of him at the end and coming down to the ending of First Kings chapter 13. Right? So these were the strange gods, brethren. What is our strange gods today? So I'm just give, I'm just sharing with you all the lifestyle, the experience, you know, of the remnant. God will be God's people will be a peculiar people. Will be different. We will be there to witness, right? To draw all men to Christ. Simplicity, right? So let's go on. Ah, and, I, and, and, and there's Hebrews 12, 12, 1. I have it here. So, you know what? Let's look at it quickly. The sin that so easily resets us, brethren. So, let me see my time. My time is getting away from me. So it says here, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Right? And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So those sins, brethren, could be a stumbling block, just like Jacob. So we need that wrestling experience, that agonizing, that pleading, that God crying out to God, God, show me my sins. Please give me the spirit of repentance and, and, and repent and, and, and for God to take this away. Brethren, this, this world we in, it is... The way, the reason why it's, 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 it's this way in this condition is because of sin. The plan of redemption is to bring us back to perfection where we do no sin. Adam and Eve was born in the image and likeness of God. No sin. They were perfect. And then sin entered the world. And by one man sin entered and death, you know, and death by sin for the wages of sin is death but praise god the gift of god is eternal life right so to jesus christ so let's go on a little more on the lifestyle of the elect let's look at numbers 15 37 Numbers 15 37 37 unto the end. It says Hezir, yeah, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes 
in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringes of the borders a ribbon of blue Bedrin, I have um, a message on dress and health in my videos right just search for dress and health scroll long right and check it out I went very deep into it right about dress reform and, and uh, the health benefits it's more is more for health and it's more to give God's glory and it's more to draw men to be a witness right so that men and women could come to know Christ right so this whole lifestyle thing this is just fruits you know good fruits that are there for men and women to see it's not for your own righteousness sake right for we know they are non righteous but it's to give God glory so that when men and see when a woman see hey yeah 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 you dress a certain way you yeah. You don't have on certain things. You don't have on makeup. You don't have on these things. It's to draw. It's, it's, it's to make them think. And it's to make them question, you know. Hey, this person is different. So it says here, ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it. And remember all the commandments. So blue represents God's commandments of the Lord and do them and that he seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which he used to go a whoring that he may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God I am the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God I am the Lord your God right brethren so fringes of blue just to remind them of God's Ten Commandments right now we know I wouldn't go there but nonetheless the application for today is do we dress like the Israelites today no we don't right they had a certain type of dress these gong looking type things just like how the Muslims wear it today I mean there is there's a certain type of dress for our time now men wear pants women wear skirts and dresses right there's a uh, there was the women's suffrage movement I think in the 1970s right the women's right movement and that woman right movement there were certain changes women wanted to vote that was the first time when they were able to vote they wanted equal wages with men you know they wanted to be equal in everything there was a big protest in the streets hundreds of, or probably thousands of women marching in the streets because they want to be equal to men but you see God assign the duties of women and men right and he gave men headship he gave men he gave women you know to submit husbands love your wives and wives submit to your husband right so only a godly man hacking onto god's word and falling after god will genuinely and truly be able to love his wife and thereby he will be a godly man in God's eyes a righteous man so his wife now could follow his leading she could submit we see the order is reversed right so the reason why Paul mentioned husband love your wife because men have a problem with loving they have an issue the reason why he said why submit women have a problem with submitting and if you want to understand it further go back to Genesis 3 understand why Eve left the side of Adam they were never to be separated and then we saw what took place right she ate the fruit she was deceived 
Nonetheless, Brethren, there is a dress code. So we know that if you look up the women's right movements as well, there is also a change of women's dress. So women began to wear pants like men. Right? And the prophet of God, for this remnant church, she says, those who feel called out, right? And accept and follow the woman's right movement, they might as well sever all connections. Cut it out. With the three angels message. Right, brethren? There's a message, the three angels message, Revelation 14, 6 to 12, for this time. That God has given a remnant people of God for this time. And brethren, I'm going to tell you, women today are dressing anyhow. It's sickening sometimes. You understand? It's hard sometimes to stay focused, but only by God's grace. So, bedroom, there's a the, the, the fringes of blue representing God's Ten Commandments. It just means that the dress code of God's remnant people will be the dress code that He designed. Deuteronomy 22 5 says, Men shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a woman, likewise, the woman should not. All that do these things are abomination. Right? So, if God's prophet confirm from him that the woman's right movement which is when women accepted or changed and say okay I'll wear pants like men those who feel called out to follow that might as well forget it because we mixing up the order of things bedroom and we have to understand for ourselves why dress reform, why dressing properly is important. Not only to give glory to God, but health benefits for your own good. You know? So when God gives something, it's not because He hates us, it's because He loves us. As many as I love, I rebuke and I chase Him. So be zealous therefore and repent. So we touch on dress here. Let's look at Exodus 16. There's a certain type of diet that God gave his people. Right? And when we go back to Romans 11, we will understand what's, what went on there. We will understand what went on there. So Exodus 16 Confirm the diet that is after they came out of Egypt, right? After the Egypt a representation of sin, after they came out sin of sin. You know. But he he, he wanted to to, to, to to purge them, he wanted to you know give them a better life. You know? But let's read Romans um Exodus sixteen you will understand the, 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 the diet, right? It will confirm the manner in which the, the, the manner that God gave to the Israelites when they came out of Egypt, right? But you know later on what went on and all of that. Some rebel, some, you know, they fiend for the, the, the leeks and onions and the meat and the flesh pots and all of that. You understand? They even had a time, a scenario where they, 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 they crave for flesh and God give them quail to eat you know millions of quail and they eat right some eat so much gluttony you know it, 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 it comes through the nose but then what took place after I think there was some judgments right some judgments right because how long we will be we we, we want to rebel better you have to understand that God gave a health reform message for this time. He gave a message for this time. And it's, and it's very important. He gave it. 
Not me. He give it. When Jesus came on the scene, all his people, majority, was sick, feeble, diseased, blind, what have you. But there were a lot of um, people who were diseased and sick because of gluttony, because of overeating, because of eating the wrong things. Likewise today. But Jesus, he acted as the great physician, right? The great medical missionary. But he didn't just heal people like that. Boom, you heal. You know, there were faith and works to be exercised. They had faith and, and, and works. Right? He used the natural remedies to heal them. So, Benjamin, we have been privileged in this last day. We have, be, we have got so much info, Benjamin, on health and eating better and the importance of why we should eat better. So, we are no excuse. But yet many refuse to follow it. Yet many decide that, okay, if I'm sick, I go to the doctor and I take some pills. When the, ki the pills killing you even faster, then some go a step further. And they go to these false prophets and pastors who so-called performing spiritualism, so-called healing from the devil. Because people want a quick fix. People don't want to eat better. They don't want to exercise faith and works. Then you realize that you had to do something. We had to do. It is Christ, right? It is God at work in us, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. So the desire He gives us, the desire to do. Right? We believe by faith and we do. We act upon it. So we could, we could, we could, we could, by faith, make a lifestyle change in the way how we eat. But in the flesh today are diseased, filled with tumors and tuberculosis and all these things, and the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when you eat it, unless you follow the Israelites back then, and they had to drain the blood completely, unless you doing that, Okay, it's, it's, it's still on you, but unless you do that, you should cut it out, brethren, because the flesh is diseased, and when you eat it, why you think it tastes so good? Because the blood is not fully drained, the life of the flesh is in the blood, the taste is in the blood, so you eat it, because it's tasty. But then the disease from those animals are being transferred to you. And what we want? We want a quick fix after. That's not how it works, Bertrand. Right? So God gave a diet. And God's remnant people, his elect, will be following this pattern. I'm telling you, they will be following this pattern. Eating right is more for spiritual. The subconscious, the, the, the frontal lobe, where God communicates effectively with us, right? You see, eating right, it allows us to think better, our minds to be clearer, and God to communicate better with us, we will make better decisions. Eating right have more to do with virtue over sin than anything else. You ever hear about Eden lost, Eden restored? What was the first temptation? In the wilderness with Christ, when he when um after he was baptized, it was diet. This whole world is taken up from day one from intemperance. That was the sin of Adam and Eve, intemperance. So God trying to restore man back to his image. And the first test is diet, brethren, and this is so crucial. Right? It's crucial. So you look at Exodus 16, you get the diet. The Israelites to give the manna and stuff like that, right? So it says here, was it prophesied beforehand that it would exist? 
that these people they were they would exist this elect was it prophesied but before i get to there let's continue reading romans 5 from verse 6 Ro romans 11 from verse 6 and it says and if by grace then it is no more of works i'll back up it says even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace and if by grace then is no more of works otherwise grace is no more grace right but if it be of works then it is no more grace otherwise work is no more work what then israel had not obtained that which he seeketh for but the election had obtained it and the rest were blinded all right so it says here who is it according as it is written god had given them the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day so god the remnant people would not be like this they will not be like this right it says verse 9 and david said let their table be made a snare a stumbling block and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always i say then have they stumbled that they should fall god forbid but rather through their fall salvation is come unto the gentiles and this is crucial right this is where the message takes off right for to provoke them to jealousy but as i said prior brethren david said the, the table the, the, the diet brethren the food that we eat the food that the Israelites eat and what they 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 they, they, they fiend for, they wanted, they crave for, was the flesh pots, was the meat, was the taste. But God was trying to refine their diet, chipping it off, going back to the original diet of vegetables, nuts and grains, simplicity. But they wanted something better. They loved variety right so bedroom this is the snare of god's remnant people today they eat whatever they want and their belly become their god we talk about the gods in genesis 35 talk about the strange gods bedroom your stomach could become an idol Right, and God is trying to refine us. So as I said, this was their snare, this was their stumbling block. This is a problem this day. Nothing has changed. For all these things have been written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the earth are come. Right, brethren? So we, we're gonna take off from was it prophesied beforehand that they would exist God's remnant is the true Israel the true Jew for this day was it prophesied let's find out 